Now, for years, eating disorders have been associated, haven't they, with teenage girls, but it might surprise you to know that more than half of the 1.6 million sufferers here in the UK are still battling the illness well into adulthood. I'm joined now by BBC Radio host Joanne Good, who at the age of 55 suffers from anorexia, and her own Dr Hilary. And I guess, you know, it's, it's strange, Joanne, because people kind of think, oh, well, you'll grow out of it. But you don't. No, I think what you do is you, you learn to handle it right. and, and, you know, as you get older, knowledge is power. So you, I, I probably know more about my eating disorder and other people's eating disorders than anything else in mm. life. I mean, mm. it, it's quite obsessive. Um, and, and, I, and I am, you know, I, I am quite embarrassed, I suppose, to, to have a sort of young girl's complaint. But... Um, at the same time, I just think it, if, if I talk about it, the more I talk about it, and the, 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 the piece that was written in the paper about me at the weekend, when I saw it on paper, when I saw what my mm. sort of traits and symptoms are that I've always thought were quite normal, um, I just think what a, a quite bizarre little person I am. No, well, you say that, but there's an awful lot of people sitting at home that are in exactly the same position, and by coming out and talking about it, you're doing, you know, you're doing them a real service by, by bringing it out, because people do think, oh, it just affects young girls, and then they get over it, and then it's fine, or sadly they don't, you know, whatever would happen to them. But you were, ta you were only a kid when this started, weren't you? You were sort of like four or five? Um, no, I, well, when, I started... Were... I was a dancer. I yes. started... I trained um, as a dancer, and I went to dancing classes from the age of four. And it's that usual thing of, of you're in front of a mirror all the time. Oh, very body conscious. Very right? body conscious. Mm. And even though I am tiny, I never had a waist. I always had sort of this short-waisted thing. So right. I was always looking at myself, and my ballet belt never went in and things like that. Mm. And so I always thought I'm slightly round, and I was becoming obsessed about being... Ballet dancer shape. Yes, if you get my, yes. So, and that was in my head. But, th but the whole thing is, Lorraine. After that, it's so many different issues. It's, mm. it, you know, as you as you get older, the things that would trigger my eating problems were um, issues like um, grief and trauma and things like that. So, mm. so it wasn't always just wanting to look thin. It yes. was to have some kind of control over a life that I was losing control of. Well, that's the thing. Honest. And also, you're in a profession. You know, you talked about being a dancer. You're an actress, where it really matters. What, what you look like and and, that, and, that, and you're living at home as well so you can hide it you know it's all about you know it's secretive all of that it's it's, it's a very very secretive mm. and devious well some call it disease mm. but yes and, and and my whole livelihood was based on what I look like and yeah. I think that's that was the irony because I was I was growing up um, in the 80s the 70s and the 80s mm. playing dolly bird you know yes, the dolly yes, bird yes, there is yes. no such thing as a dolly bird now <laughs> So I was getting all these dolly bird roles yeah. and then slowly I was losing them and in the end I wasn't even getting auditions. Yeah. I, was, I was not being sent for anything because my agent could see that I was visibly mm. sort of decaying. And we don't have any photographs of you from that time no, because you, you got rid of them. Mm. You burnt them all mm. when you were at your tiniest because you must have been very, very, very skinny. Um, I, I was five and a quarter stone. Gosh, I mean, even to a tiny lady like you, that's way too small. Yes, and and I and when I knew I was coming on here yesterday, one of your researchers said, "Are oh, there pictures?" And I phoned a boyfriend that I was going out with at the time, and he mm. and I said, "Robin, have you got any of these pictures of us in Crete?" Because I think that was when I was at my worst, actually, yes. lying on a beach in Crete, thinking I was looking fantastic, and that mm. people were looking at me because I looked so wonderful and. Looking back on it and listening to friends, mm. um, they were looking at me because I was quite a sight. Right. And he said, no, there's no pictures. You, you know, you, you rip them, them up. You and he said, up and I don't have any copies. And, oh, gosh. Mm. It just, it's, and it does show, though, Hilary, doesn't it, that it's not an illness that will just go away. No. You know, it's going to be with you probably for the rest of your life, unless you're very, very lucky and sure. you get over it. Uh, about, about half of, of young girls who have it mm. will, will be managed and treated and, and they won't have problems in the future, but a fair number will all have a tendency to yeah. to come back into anorexia there'll always be that obsession or thought about yeah. food and about their, their body shape and image and you know isn't it funny we've just been looking at pictures of Jane Fonda you know yeah. and there's Sharon Stone and there's mm. um, there's others who Madonna perhaps who, who whose glamorous images make women think that that's what they should aspire know, to be and, and expect to be as yeah. they approach and, and go beyond the menopause mm. so there's still the pressures for certain women to want to be Absolutely. perfectionist in the way they look and the way they control mm. their life. And, and sometimes when you, when you have a, a bereavement or a loss uh, of, of whatever, 
sometimes that's the trigger to thinking, well, if I can't control that, I can control other things and I mm. will be in, in command. Because it must, I mean, food. it must still to this day, it dominates your life, doesn't it? I yes. mean, you're, you're a lot better at handling it now, but it's still there, isn't it? I, yes, but I'm, I'm very unspontaneous. It's like I, could, I, I would love, you know, to if someone says, let's all go out to dinner tonight, that I would say, yeah, great, yeah. I can't. I, I have to have warning. Um, I have mm. to know a couple of days ahead and then I'll, I'll balance that out with what I'm eating today and tomorrow I and the next. Yep. So, so it, yeah, it's in my head all the mm. time. But uh, as an older anorexic, uh, I feel I have control and I know I will never get as ill as I was. Right. That's, that's when I was saying knowledge is power. It's kind of you're, you're dealing with it. I am dealing sense. with it. You're dealing Absolutely with it on a day-to-day -day 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 basis. And, and I just, I wanted to say, one of the reasons I want to talk about this is you see it everywhere. And I see it in supermarkets when I see what I, little me, you know, at yes. five and a quarter stone, of women my age still reading the calorific content of mm. absolutely everything, absolutely. you know? And I look at shopping baskets in supermarkets and I can just spot these women. And I want, the thing is, I don't know what to say to them because I, I don't, if anyone had come up to me at my worst, and said, why don't you just eat something mm, that's got mm. a bit of fat in it? It's not that easy, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure. yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. how you deal with it. Mm. I really don't know how you do but it. You do, well, you do by coming on and talking to us, which yeah. is what you've done, which is absolutely fantastic. And I really wish you all the best. And thank you for highlighting this. It's, it, it, we're going to get a huge response, I know we already have. Can I just ask, thank have, you. You, have you had a bone scan? No. OK, no. we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes, that might be a very good <laughs> idea, actually. That's another thing that we should talk about. Thank you both very much. Right, after the break...